Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ruba Katrib. I'm the curator at Sculpture Center. And thank you so much for coming out today. And welcome to Subjective Histories of Sculpture, which is an ongoing collaboration between Sculpture Center and the Vera List Center for Art and Politics at the New School. Um, we're thrilled to be entering in, or we've already, we're in our eighth year of collaborating on this program, which fe features select artists speaking on the things, people, artworks, movies, ideas, et cetera, that have influenced and impact the, impacted their work. Um, this, this program aims to explore how contemporary artists think about sculpture, its history, legacies, and potential for innovation. Past speakers have included Martin Cresselles, Simon Starling, Dominique Gonzalez Forrester, and Trisha Donnelly. This year, we are very pleased to have in the program New York-based artist B. Wirtz, who spoke in February. And today, um, we have Thai artist Arya Rasmurin Suk. <laughs> and that's the last time I will pronounce her last name, um, <laughs> who is speaking um, tonight. So before I introduce Aria, I would like to share that this Saturday, we're having a lecture at 2 p.m. At, at Sculpture Center with Joshua Simon, who was a past fellow at the Vera List, and he'll speak about his new book, Neomaterialism. I'm, and I'm also, so on to Aria, I'm so pleased that she has generously traveled here to speak to us, and I'm also, proud to announce that Sculpture Center will be presenting her first survey exhibition in the United States in early 2015. As one of the most important artists from Thailand, Arya's work is ambitious, challenging, and grapples with such serious matters as the relationship between power and pedagogy and the thorny politics of life, life and death. Um, through implicating herself as an instigator and a moderator, Arya ventures into complex realms specifically concerned with systems of language and communication. Her works over the past decade have primarily focused on disparate subjects who often aren't heard and who are also embedded in certain cultural taboos, the dead, animals, villagers, the insane, and women. Additionally, Arya makes earnest attempts to converse with subjects who don't speak in languages that are comprehended by or even acknowledged by mainstream society. Through various acts of witnessing and interaction, she creates both poetic and real moments of understanding. Arya was born in 1957 in Trad, Thailand, and lives and works in Chiang Mai. I'll only mention a handful of her many major exhibitions, um, such as her representation of Thailand at the Venice Biennale in 2005. Arya was a featured artist in Documenta 13, she was in the California Pacific Triennial, the Dojima River Biennial in Osaka, Japan, the Asian Art Biennial at the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts, the Sydney Biennial, the Earl Industrial Biennial of Contemporary Art, the Taipei Biennial, the Guangzhou Biennial, the Carnegie International, the Istanbul Biennial, the Johannesburg Biennial, and the Asia Pacific Triennial. So um, please join me in welcoming Arya. Thank you. Oh, and we'll, um, Aria will speak, and then we will follow that with a Q&A period. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to read my text and show uh, DVDs. The story might begin in 1990 when grandma's spirit was stirred up from the stupa that contained her bone fragments. She got up with difficulty to sit under the orange jasmine tree of her age when she died to read a letter from her niece from overseas. The letter was about Friar Copper Couture Una Tourismus, a bunch of Westerners lying or sitting naked, sunbathing on a lawn in the city. That made me a niece in the story discover a new meaning of nature that was different from nature in grandma's rambutan and durian orchard back home, where I and my friends used to chase one another around during the semester break, during primary school time. The story may have had something to do with my astrology or so. An old astrology text said, 
people born under the sign of cancer with the moon riding on a skinny white horse, just like me, who appear like an eastern moon princess, who is easily disturbed. Maybe it was culture shock, which came in many forms during my studies in the West. Such behavior doesn't seem to suit the moon princess, but Denise loved it anyway, especially my German teacher of photography, who had the habit of kicking the film drying cabinet to close it. It made me realize that one need not show respect to things one depend on. Looking back 30 years ago, the meadows, flowers in the wind, in my printmaking seemed to go well with a sensitive woman over 20 years old who lived under the culture of moderate self-expression prescribed to all females. Again, when I look back, I have a question for myself as the creator of the work. Why does man have to go through nature to go deeper into his life? And why, in order to approach nature, one has to go through a painting or a poem? I wonder if when I study at Silapakorn University, an oldest art academy in Thailand, they inserted some sort of chip in students' brain to program them to do certain things. No wonder we have that traditions of single string when one has to make sure no artwork gets a mix in art style of other disciplines. They have done that for every generation from being a student until one becomes a teacher from teenage to old age. I myself got circled with that power of being the only kind, which is interpreted as being unique in my field of printmaking for as long as 14 years. The sound of that cabinet kicking of the teacher who was hired to teach me photography keeps echoing in my head. It tells me that we can do differently and we don't have to cross the cabinet with our hand. This can be roughly translated that I can do other kinds of art too, not just printmaking. I have told you, Grandma, in my letter about this cabinet crossing too. The tale could have ended plainly if the deceased grandma hadn't written back to her niece. It's in the imagination, of course. She could not write. She could respond only orally. But she is dead. Her response is voiceless. But it's alive in my imagination. Even though one of my printmaking works in Germany was a picture of five grandchildren standing saying goodbye to grandma's spirit in the gloomy atmosphere. Many of my work were entitled Farewell, even though artwork could preserve the reality of the loss of one we love. The writing to grandma who passed away publishes in a woman magazine in Thailand at that time confirmed her existence against the fact that she is dead. Another printmaking is dream of mother, which actually came from my dream. I asked my aunt if my mom had that dress I saw in the dream, and she said my mom had it. It was blue with white polka dots. My dream away from home brought back all memories, which were so real that I guess because there was some gap of reality and in the absence of a homeland situation, and it works well in black and white printmaking. It appears that the art of printmaking accepts the truth of impermanence, while written work provides a way to create a dialogue between the living and the dead. There's a note about this printmaking of a female student in her drawing class at the Fine Arts University. 
She was afraid of figure drawing as she always got F for it. In Germany, her figure drawing was not right regarding proportion and light. This allowed the spirit of her grandma and her mum to form, although distorted. In the dinner with cancer, an installation related to death of my father, I avoid putting any human figure in my work. The saline, bottle, needles, and gauze are things I collected during my dad's illness. Things from the hospital were hung over the bed or places sitting at the end of dad's bed. During his last period of cancer, I took care of him at the hospital every weekend. Plaster of Paris cast into human parts like foot, hands, arms, is another solution for the female student who is not good at drawing human anatomy properly. She was rejected by an instructor in the sculpture division at Sirapakorn University who said to her, a girl should not study sculpture. You better study something else. Departure of country Thai girls, sculpture installations was an outcome from my becoming acquainted with some Thai women in Germany in 1989 to 90. There were women with no education who went there as prostitutes for a chance to marry a German man for their children or relatives to have a better life. Dance of three Thai girls. In one sense, at a little over 30, the woman working on art still had enough hormones to keep her young. Her sculpture works were mostly the yearning for an anonymous person who was not present in her work. There was only loneliness. The artist herself kept thinking, drawing, and looking for connection. Sometimes she has questions about illness, her own identity, uncertainty, and doubts, and lack of spiritual peace, which was against the Buddhist teaching that stress, peace, and controlling one's mind. Until the day she reached 40, the last straw for marriage, for living with a, long, a lifelong partner, the sculpture was made from clay, iron, and clothes to put in her townhouse to keep as a companion. There is no need to think of friendship, as in reality, if a woman could have friendship with sculpture to share the same roof. She was kind heart. She gave her bed and her sofa bed to the sculpture friend. The sculpture and the woman has breakfast together. The sculpture was leaning against the door to see her go off to work and welcome her back after work. She took care of the sculpture like a housemaid. She spray water on him to prevent the clay from falling apart. After three months, this implied that human relationships are fragile and can't last forever. So no need to expect that between a man and a sculptor. In one of my book, I refer to myself using a male pronoun, POM, as in the title, POM, am an artist, or I am an artist, which ran for one year in Thai Weekly Magazine. In the book, I raise some questions for people in Thai art circle. For an example, uh, such as using critical language of the Educational Institute and elsewhere. Never use the same stiff definition to reduce the fine taste of artwork, be it a literary work or visual art. Never use the same familiar big words to explain something too superficially, especially with a work that is very subtle and sophisticated, related to humanity or society. On the other hand, never use big words to deceive people by making a simple little being art sound gorgeous. Moreover, never use the rule of structure in writing 
with an artwork that is far different from the structure and never imply ignorance or misunderstanding to superficially interpret a piece of work and reduce its value. At worst, never use low taste humor to reveal one's incompetence to perceive the work whose creator has pulled all his effort to it. Most importantly, the new perception from a piece of writing will make the audience and the art creator shine. For example, one character in the story, an artist says, I'm not going to excuse myself for telling my personal story to the public because people already assume that an artist's life and his art are the same story. A question follows, why do people expect an artist's life to be the same as his work? It's because people believe that an artist's work has been extracted from his herself. Another question comes, is his her identity one-sided? It's not a mixed formula and requires merely one definition or so. A third question is, if his her identity could be concluded as clearly as his work, which remains static, unchanged, would that be inhuman or would that be an outcome of a very subtle liar? So this picture is a combination between three parts or three lives, a monk, a woman, and one French bulldog. The French artist created a famous sentence that was uh, 1854 to 1891. The sentence is, I am another person. Thus I in the work is not a smaller part of the artist because during the reading the I has made, the reader identify himself partly with the pronoun, so I cannot fully represent the author. This is not different from French philosopher's idea of uh, the big O author in us. The part that is missing is desire because people do not question their own desire or search for their own existence. This is a lack of perfection in life. Art helps us search for this part to follow our desire and takes us out of the group off of the court of the others to become an individual to a more private person than usual. I don't know whether it was because of her inferiority complex at not being able to draw a human figure or because of her living with her sculpture or of casting her own arms, hands, and food, mixing it, mixing in with her talking to her dead grandma through a letter, maybe all to get, maybe all got mixed together. In communication between the living and the dead, that means read classical Thai poetry written by the second king of the present dynasty began in 1997 to bury a farewell's bitter smell. The corpse of the common woman in the grass coffin was still and quiet listening to the poetic tale of the love of Inau, the young king who was separate from his first love to meet his next love. The corpse was so attentive to the story that it became stiffly intense. It forgot itself for a while that it was lifeless and was sometimes soaking wet in the grass coffin. Other times it was put on a cold stainless tray of the hospital. The dead body forgot coldness, wetness, or its physical condition, as it was so absorbed with the literary charm that it was not aware that the woman reading the poetic piece was a total stranger to her. Yeah. 
แค่นั้นพระชมยงพงอสัญญาแดวารับสั่งแล้วบังคมลาไอวันส์โรดอับบอว์ดับพอปูลาริตี้ออฟโกสต์มูฟิสและซัมสปายซี่อินสแตนต์นูดเดิลส์อเมริกาไทยพีเพิลแอดวันไทม์ดับอินสแตนต์มีนิ่งออฟเดอะฮัสอีทเอนอัสมอร์และมอร์ฟอร์อีกซัมเพิลพีเพิลที่ดีฟายน์ดับมีนิ่งออฟเดสทรูริชัลส์วิชบีคัมทรดิชันและเมกเดสฮัฟอัฟิกส์รีดิเมดมีนิ่งฮาวดูยูทรีดเดสทูอัปเทนอันนิวมีนิ่ง At some point, the dead woman and the living woman play together, like playing with a doll. The dead one was the doll, and the living one dresses the doll childishly. Her reason for playing like that was. A tale, maybe it overflow of truth, like a poem, leading me as we step over art in the academy, past fun games of boys, in the neighborhood, Oli, where are we heading? To watch two women of different ages so focused in their act of dressing, cold, stiff bodies, under conditions invisible to naked eyes, the feeling that we are doing right with the smell. Perhaps the poetic taste has represses the ability to see through or to perceive the truth, or it can be the outpouring of information of reason. I began an explanation of these sets of work in the exhibition's catalog as follow. It's art, don't you look down on it. 
if it rains not at all, you could apply or do whatever you want simply because it is art. When the work created with the value given to poetic flavor rather than correctness of the data and reasonability, the perception of the work is the same as that of a poem. You can just step into it and feel the situation in front of you. On first hearing it, it's surprising, but when one realizes what they're facing her, the anguish exuded because that's the picture, a kind of human. This is a comment from one American female curator who took the work to exhibit. Another criticism, Araya has created an impossible medium. It's awkward. We didn't know whose body it was in front of us. Finally, we were aware that we were the audience who were hearing or the audience she intended to hear it. When I was in secondary school in a class on English literature, I came across a book in which the protagonist said, I return to the place again. In 2005, the poetry reader took the role of a teacher and the dead body, the students, and participants in a dead seminar. Thanatos revokes the perception of eros. Feeling death makes us feel life, like a scene of one's droning or riding a bicycle following the smell of death. In my story, I am an artist. The flesh is burned in a roadside crematorium being looked after by two undertakers one winter day's evening. The smell of their challenge, one to change the meaning that it blow back to the living ones. It comes from a pine of wood while a small bike cut through the mass of air mix with the smell of a human body being burned. It was like going through the vacuum of life if one has not gone through death, will one have the vacuum of life due to another case? Thanatos and Eros. The class, the teacher, converse with the stiff body of student, a setup of a dialogue, which actually is a monologue or speaking to oneself alone. We chatted together and gossip about the living. We discussed some details, the mournful funeral songs that blasted out of the community loudspeaker, the multitudes of fragrance flower that were placed around the decaying body during the farewell ride, the banging of nails into the wooden coffin properly aroused the dead uh, one to recall the blasting music to of the pub she used to First frequent. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am presently here Standing in the front of you, uh, my my standing position is between you and the green board behind me. Uh, only one propose to have a talk. I am willing to accept the fact that this talk might be without any form of discussion, but it is okay. Um, so now we come to today's topic. Uh, today top, today's topic is uh, in the funeral, the, the dead person was carried around the, in a procession as if she were a princess a, in the last scene of. It might be an act of condolence the, for those who would march in and enjoy the parade, or the, a more blunt call saying the next one. Mm -hmm implying that death isn't too bad. Every, uh, this is for events. the last occasion we would be dressed in Outside their best clothes the and most shiny shoes in this yellow. life, this birth. And the autumn, the end of autumn, will come soon. Um, it lets me remember a television show in somewhere in Europe in 1997 called solitary leave taking in autumn, which state that more people die in autumn than in any other season. 
Good evening. Welcome to the class three. I hear some voice. One of you said something. It is not evening. It's still afternoon. Um, I am from the press that we call uh, after four p.m. evening, and this makes uh, the night come a little bit early, around seven p.m. Before we go to the class three's lesson, I would like to uh, summarize what we learned in the class one and class two. Someone who did not participate in those two classes can know some uh, basic issues. Uh, and then after that, we will make an open discussion. One detail that we discuss is death. the encounter in any right why one was alive rarely seldom meant to be for me. Sometimes the recollection told in a letter saying, this will happen only if the grandma is still alive, or dear grandma, I miss you very much today because it is the first anniversary of your departure. In the letter to grandma, the communication between the two people drift away having no receiver. As a fiction in the form of a letter that sets apart the reader, from being the real receiver. This is not different from looking at the work or reading the story, I am an artist. The hanging in the air or being alone is the confusions of the text. The grandma seems to be there, but isn't. The reader seems to be grandma, but isn't. What else can it be like? Like watching a video of the insane woman or of them that makes the audience question themselves, but unable to get the meaning, not knowing really, maybe it's a dream, then who is insane? มาขอดูก็เลยอยู่ที่นั่นพ่อแม่ถามว่าลูกกลัวไม่ช้างมดหนูก็ว่าไม่กลัวค่ะช้างก็ชะลักก็มาอยู่บ้านช้างเหลือ
this circumstance, the sole object of attention should be the treasury of the moon. Was created, it was intended to correspond to life in the rural areas. The white bed sheet on the rail of the back veranda, the soft says song for Elise on a Sunday afternoon. Walking through the kamma of the old and the young, the scene of the life circle. Interpreting all landscape, we may have to endure repetitions of the same old gamma. Some unexpected events sometimes bring momentary happiness. Afterwards, regret rises in our memory even for bygone hardships. Sometimes I guess that the use of landscape in this set of works is related to the next set entitled The Two Planets. In February 2007, I was at a hotel in Helsinki. Often after finishing the installation of a work, I would come up with a new idea. The morning before departure, I sat drinking coffee at a hotel restaurant at around 6 o'clock. A sentence from a Chinese scholar in the article I was reading made me think the opposite. The sentence said, art in Asia will be developed when it reaches sharp criticism from outside. The outside means the West. Early in 2001, I moved from the townhouse in the city to a rural village. The conversation among the patty rice grower doing their work or during religious functions, which sounded amusing, was not like the conversation of those I encountered at office, the university, or among art students and fellow writers. The content political attitudes through professionals personally. The village where I live has a river running through it. Next to the edge of the village is a bamboo forest. Further along is the extensive petty field of three villages, which turn lush green in the rainy season and gradually turn yellow in the harvest time before turning dark green with fear of beans in the early summertime. The narrow road in the village makes me perceive that death is better here than when I was in the city where you seem to come close to death for only two short hours during the evening funeral service, right? But at the village, people usually set the coffins in the front yard of the house or on the front porch of the house where they give arms and food offering to the monks in the morning, as well as before noon and the funeral chants or sermon in the evening. Their stories about this are also strange, for example, an uncle got bitten by a dog 
and so he went to the hospital for first aid treatment and dressing the wound. When the doctor discovered he had diabetes and kidney problems, and three days later he died. Another uncle who was walking in the field in the morning when this video was taken also died the following month. The idea about art being taken good care of as if it would never die is in contrast to the religious standard of life where people die two days after being bitten by a dog. It made me want the two to meet each other immortality and ordinariness in the impressive scenery of the three villages. This set of work has been interpreted to, par to be paradoxical to the study of art history, dissolving the inviolate meaning with ignorance and facing one's own ignorance from the point of view of farmer and villagers. Yeah. 
The two planets is the sort of the next city, village, and elsewhere. Village and elsewhere, we should start somewhere in the previous episode that links to what we are talking about, or we can pick a place, an incident, a feeling, or idea, or ourselves to start with. If both episodes deal with place, we can use place to start with, therefore village and elsewhere has its beginning. ที่น่าจะมีใครบางคนซึ่งเป็นผู้หญิงจริงเธอเลิกกรีดตัวเองเพื่อหาประสบการณ์จริงจากข้อสงสัยที่ว่ายังมีฉันอยู่อีกจริงหรือไม่บทสนทนาถามตอบทางอินเทอร์เน็ตตอนเธออายุ26เธอควรไปโรงพยาบาลเธอควรกลับบ้านในจิตใจของผู้คนวันที่ใครๆมาวัดแล้วไม่คุยโทรศัพท์ไม่ก้มหน้าอยู่กับข้อความหรือเล่นเกมบนมือถือแต่ได้ยินเสียงพระเทศลึกเข้าไปในใจซึ่งก็เป็นชาวนาไม่ชอบจิตกรรมของเรือนัวเขาบอกว่ามันรกปู่ซึ่งแก่มากแล้วพูดว่าในงานของมิเล่เป็นญาติที่ตายแล้วแต่ลูกชายปู่ว่านั่นอาจเป็นข้าวสัตว์คือสิ่งข้อที่ข้อที่อะไรอ่ะข้อที่อะไรลูกอ่าสิ่งข้อที่สามว่าไงไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มีแน่ไม่ก็มี
There are so many of them that catching stray dog in the night time has become good business. Those dogs are shipped to the northeast to be exported to Vietnam. The treasury of the moon is about a woman and a dog sitting at home watching a TV soap when it was interrupted by endless news of political conflicts in Thailand. The The fat dog shown in the video died four days before Ngap and I returned from Germany. So we didn't have the chance to say goodbye to her. This is those life with bird face or is this the audience whose face are clearly defined, who are not clear about the words. Sometimes being able to perceive some things does not mean understanding or normality. Both the audience and our reader are unstable, unable to get the meaning. So how can poetry repress understanding for the reader? I, the artist, can understand that I am not just a conversation partner, but an audience. At the close of, a of the curtain, I am the artist who bows down farewell. An implication of the end of performance, the reader is provoked to perceive the situation when the stage is empty. What's the significance of all the dogs, uh, reoccurring dogs, in your species? When I was a child, when I was younger, I believe that art was um, an exit was was an exit for life. So more pure and more um, an exit to somewhere which was pure, which was cleaner, which was more innocent. 
And when I grew older, I realized that it wasn't the case. And the caring for dogs when they are sick and wounded became something very special for me. So that is the, the way that these dogs came to be a part of my life and also a part of my art. Um, could you speak about how the reception of your work within Thailand impacts your work? It sometimes sort of seems to be folded in in terms of this um, layering of, of meaning and audience and reception. At the the beginning, her print her printmaking and um, oh, wow, okay. so um, her earlier work, especially with her printmaking, got tons of awards at national level, tons um, many many awards at national level. So the audience in Thailand were able to accept and accepted very well her her early works. Yeah. Um, her later installation works were, were perceived as, as something quite different and um, like things that people had never seen before at that time in Thailand. And when she started her series with, um, with, the, with the dead, with the corpses, reading poetry to the corpses, she became an outsider to the, the art world in Thailand. And, and she followed that series with the, in the, the, the women in the mental asylum and with the, with the dogs. Oh, sorry, with the, um, not the dogs, with the, the animals that, that, that were being killed, that were dying. Mm. So I guess to answer your question, her work is not about the beauty or the aesthetic which, which is accepted or, or liked in Thailand. Could you talk about your work in a mental asylum? I've been doing some work in mental asylums and uh, just interested in your experience there. Um, ทำในในในเค้าเรียกว่าอะไรโรงพยาบาลโรงพยาบาลโรคจิตค่ะจิตเราเค้าก็บอกว่าเค้าอยากจะทราบว่าตอนนี้เค้าก็ทํางานของเ
หรือว่าใครซึ่งเ,เกิดท้องโดยไม่ได้แต่งงาน <coughs> ใช่ไหมคะ <coughs> หรือจนนะก็ก็เป็นกลุ่มที่มีปัญหาด้วย So another two groups of women that I encountered were women who who were uh, preg pregnant out of wedlock or were were poor in poverty. Low name. So that was her experience. Thank you. Um, for the two planets videos, I was just wondering, how did you pair the iconic? Paintings with the groups of people, and if there was any spe specificity to what you wanted to show that particular group. I want to know that in the series Two Planets, the artist chose the group and the way. Is it like the way you choose the group and the way you match? The group of Van Gogh, right? It's a Nile painting. 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 So, for example, in the in the Vincent, the Van Gogh, she had it was a picture of a farmer sleeping. So, she showed that picture to you know people of the same profession, so the farmers in Thailand. Oh. But instead of um, male men, young men farmers, she actually showed showed that picture to to older women farmers. เขาเขาได้ตัวเลขจากลูกของฟันโกไปซื้อลอตเตอรี่ Oh wow and these women I don't know if you remember they were kind of reciting out the numbers so the older women in that in that video they um, actually got the numbers from the picture and went and bought a lottery ticket with it ส่วนงานของมาเน่ที่มีนูดค่ะก็เหมาะสำหรับผู้หญิงผู้ชายหนุ่มหญิงสาวชายหนุ่มเพราะว่ามันทะลึ่ง Um, so for the Manet with the nude, she found that it was appropriate to be shown to young men and women who, you know, were quite flirtatious and perhaps a little bit, you know, perverted. I think was the word she, yeah, a little <laughs> perverted. Okay. <laughs> For the the mile uh, with the three women, she chose the the audience. She the critics actually the critics she chose for that were um, uh, three three women, well a group of women, and um, it was the the one by the lake, and the, she the river. Uh, by the river, and she chose that just because it was uh, very beautiful, set against the river. Yeah, those, so that's the series.